Hey everybody, Michael B, Life Raft Ministries. This is the Home Group Wednesday Experience. And the idea is that people around the world will start home groups. We will start to just see a movement of God that I think is long overdue. I guess I should have my microphone a little closer. Now, the idea behind these is to do them via Zoom live. So there's some people participating and put it up into the cloud, put it on YouTube and make it available so anybody can share it in their homes. And so why aren't we live right now? Because my amazing next store neighbor who purchased his home 11 months ago is still rehabilitating that home. Apparently it was very sick and it needed massive help even though it's a really nice house. Anyway, they are gonna take a sledgehammer, uh, what do you call those things? Those uh, electric, uh, you know, pounder things. Not really sure what they're called. Somehow I'm blanking on that. But they're going to take one exactly at noon, which is where I was going to do this. So listen, today, I don't want to just do Bible studies. You can get those anywhere. I want to have a, a life transformation moment every time we gather together. You know, I think in the first century church, and that was last week's study, it wasn't like it is today. People had an interaction that changed lives, changed communities, changed homes, businesses, offices, churches. It doesn't matter. And I don't want this to be any exception. So unless it's exceptional, I don't think we should do it. And today we're going to talk about shifting no matter what happens, no matter what the world looks like, no matter what's going on, because as we all know, circumstances are getting stranger by the hour the uh you know let's call it the entrance ramp that's what i like it's it's actually the birth pains in matthew 24 about the period of time right prior to the beginning of the seven year tribulation and if you're really paying attention go to the wall at life raft ministries and look up bearishy prophecy or the youtube video because there's an awfully strong body of biblical evidence that supports a 2030 embedded into scripture date of the second return of Christ. If you subtract seven years from that, it gets kind of interesting quick, doesn't it? So, and by the way, if it's pre-trib, pre-tribulation rapture, that means it could happen anytime between, between today and 2023. So these are big things, but let's just dive in, okay? I have been working on this. I'm excited about it. Uh, I'm excited because I know what this work did in the world. Let me just uh, slide this over, begin the slideshow from this current slide. So this is following up in the very first week. Again, we want to create um, easy to deliver vehicles that people can do home group studies and in fact, I want to be able to even follow up with your groups. If you get 10, 20, 30 people in a room, I'd like to figure out a way to zoom myself in there and interact and build leaders and all that wonderful stuff. But again, let's rock and roll and let's make sure God's in the midst. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we just invite you into the very center of everything we're sharing. We're going to go through. It's going to be short, sweet, life-changing in Jesus' name. Amen. So here's the idea. My idea, my concept, my verbiage for a breakthrough is nothing's changed, but everything is different. So I want you to think about this for a second. I kind of like the work. Uh, I think he's kind of a new ager. I think he's kind of way out there, but he's also a very articulate PhD researcher by the name of Bruce Lipton. And I came across his Biology of Beliefs book, a mm, couple, whenever it came out, I'm going to say a decade and a half-ish ago, and he says positive thinking has as much impact as negative thinking. Okay, stop. <laughs> Some people forget that, right? Because the negative thinking creates an, it, uh, creates an entire biological pathway, and if you look in the Word of God, it talks about mm, hope deferred makes the heart sick. It means the biology of thinking hopelessness actually makes your heart sick. You know what I think? I think there's a whole lot of Christians, not just broke, busted, and disgusted, but actually physically dying on the inside 
from the weight of depression, anxiety, worry. And I just want to see the church set free. I want to see people set uh, free. But the problem is that we program ourselves with negativity, but you can repro reprogram yourself too. And I put in red letters this, the same way. Not because I'm Jesus, but because I wanted her to stand out. Now, here's the idea. If we can program ourselves by happenstance in a negative way, could we program ourselves to the positive? Well, I got a quote in the bottom. I think there's two big problems as I have been in this the field of personal development for a little over three decades. Do you feel positive uh, when bad things are happening? In other words, I just want to, I just want to have a, I want to feel positive, I want to think positive, you know, there's no weeds in my garden, there's no weeds in my garden, there's no weeds in my garden, and we're going to jump into the book of James, which by the way, is an amazing book, and we're going to just do five, six short verses that are going to change your life, but I just want to tell you, if you sit in the garden and just say there's no weeds, there's no weeds, and you have faith but no action, nothing ever happens. Well, here's what happens. Here's the second point, of, uh, and it's incredible. I've seen this so much. When there's an argument between how you feel and how you think, how you feel will always win. What does that have to do with the Word of God? Oh, everything. But first, let's just take a look at how our brains function. Let's not go deep. Let's not have to, you know, do a PhD level studies. Let's just broad spectrum. Let's just go 30,000 foot. Let's just grab a hold of something that shifts you. Remember the, the idea of a breakthrough. When you get done with this, nothing's changed in your life, but everything is different. What if you could instantly, when you leave here, access the hope of God, the joy of the Lord, and the wisdom that means the practical application of what to do next anytime you want it? I'm going to argue that's what Jesus paid the death, burial, and resurrection price to do. Now look at these two brains. On the left, you got you know, brain just sitting around quiet. There's something to be said about that. Being quiet and meditating kind of two different things. The brain scan looks slightly different. But after triggering endorphins, I want you to know that feelings of euphoria, feelings of happiness, feelings of joy trigger this uh, neurotransmission soup, if you will, of brain chemistry. One of the biggest debates that used to be, I don't believe it is a debatable point anymore, is did the chicken or the egg come first? And by that, relative to our subject today, I mean, did bad, 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 bad brain chemistry come first? And then you feel bad, or did you feel bad? And it created bad brain chemistry. I'm gonna tell you that the greatest um, PhDs that I've ever studied under the last 20 years all agree with the latter. You started toxic thinking. You started negative thinking. You started uh, to uh, embed into your very narrow pathways. Um, just imagine plumbing just with large, large, large vessels, right? Large pieces of plumbing. You put more water in. The more frequently you access a negative emotion, the, the bigger, it's called a dendrite. It's like a tree, a branch, or like plumbing, right? The, the thicker that water flow, the more that water flow can go through through the thicker plumbing. You go look at the brains on the, on the right, real quick. Prefrontal lobes. I want you to think about your prefrontal lobe uh, uh, cortex, okay? It is the place that we set and achieve goals. It's the place where we receive inputs from all these different central points. It's the place that allows us to make kick butt awesome decisions. What happens when we're healthy? We have activity going into that prefrontal cortex. What happens when we're frustrated, anxiety, fear-filled, latter-day stuff? Where am I going to get food, shelter, clothing, love? Never has there been a more important message for the church, I think, than maybe James 1. How to access wisdom and how to feel different than the world want you to feel. You know, they want us to be depressed. They want us to be filled with anxiety. They want us beaten, downtrodden, and hopeless. But that is not the gospel. And when we talk about creating this first century church, in living room, just like the one I'm speaking in right now, then we got to understand that they were persecuted beyond anything in our wildest imaginations, and yet they flourished. You know, we can sort of fall victim. If you look at the, um, 
one time I was in Greece, I'm gonna do a, a video on this, and uh, I was actually in the very first Olympic stadium that ever happened. And if you look at the Roman Empire, you look at the Grecian uh, things that happened during the, the biblical days in the first century church was spreading the gospel through that part of the world, you realize that they were caught up in entertainment. They were caught up, much like this world today in materialism, you know that the Olympics were naked, right? So not only were you watching these champion athletes, you were watching them naked. People were mesmerized by it. Do you know that they killed Christians? Do you know what the crime from the Grecian uh, and Roman governments were? Do you know what they labeled them? Crimes against humanity because they wouldn't go and watch naked people exercising the persecution of the church is coming. The Bible says we're going to turn against each other. We're going to turn each other in, mother against daughter, father against son. But there's going to be a blood thicker than water with believer versus believer. And this is the, this is the amazing message behind James, right? And here's this guy, you know, I don't go into big uh, biblical historical facts because I think it's heady. What I care about is the heart heart is everything. There is no experience with God outside of this incredible life force called the heart, both the biological, physical heart, and the one that's attached to our mind, our will, and our emotions. So here's this brother of Jesus. And I don't know about y'all, but most people don't want their, imagine if your older brother was Bill Gates, and you did fairly good. You know, you had a your retirement age, you got a million bucks in the bank, you did a pretty good job with your life, you've got a good family, but your brother is a Bill Gates, which we all know is demon, <laughs> demonically oppressed or possessed, who knows? He's part of the New World Order, right? Anyway, uh, squirrel, here's the thing. How would you feel about that? And then if your brother passed away, would you give your very life to keep his story moving forward. You see, James was not just the brother of Jesus. He was the older brother of Jesus. And anybody who's ever had a sibling of any kind, we know, don't we? We do not want them doing that much better. And yet James gives his very life and writes this amazing thing. But before I say anything, I want you to understand that the, the mind of God created this thing called the Bible. And he wrote these these thoughts down, and he put them into words for the language of the day, uh, Greek, Aramaic, and Hebrew. And now what we have is we have the evolution of language all the way to our very language that you, most of us are speaking with here, English. So there's a chronology, there's a, system, a systemization of what the thought was, the original thought of God, what, the, what it means today, so I want to just take one word, consider, or in, in some versions, I think the one we're going to look at here might say count. The, the King James Version it has a strong concordance, and that's, it's got all these numbers associated with each word. It means to rule over. It means to be governor of. It means to hold in esteem. It means to make a decision to choose. Hmm. Okay, so when we consider something, we actually get to decide what it feels like. Let's rock and roll. You know, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials uh, of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature, complete, and lacking in anything. There's another translation that says nothing. Now, I don't want to dive in real deep. This is going to be so short and so sweet because that's the way God is. He interrupts your pattern, gives you something new, says, hey, your whole biology isn't working. Some of you guys, and I can tell you what the number is, it's 50 to 60 percent of everybody is on some kind of psychotropic drug and a depressant, things to go to sleep, things to wake up, things to get us emotionally stable, and all of it is pretty much a lie from the pharmaceutical pit of hell. Now, I know that may challenge you. 
The Bible also says that in the last days, we will be deceived by lying wonders. I just did a post on this with a mask. And it also says that a spirit of pharmakeia is going to overtake the world, which is the Greek root word of where we get pharmacy or pharmaceutical. So we are going to be deceived by pharmaceuticals. And I want you to ask yourself a question before you get all, uh, uh, uh. if you're wrong, do you want to know? If you're deceived, do you want to grow? If you're understanding God's viewpoint, opinion, and perspective wrong, is now a good time to figure that out. So consider it all joy. And I would I looked at this, and I, 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 I am so embarrassed to tell you guys this, but I actually grabbed my Bible. This is not a Bible, but this is an amazing book by a buddy of mine, Giftology, if you're in business. I'm not even plugging the book. I just love John. I took my Bible. I just lost millions of dollars in 18 year marriage and I threw it and said, consider it all joy when I go through this. Are you kidding me? Now here's your lifeline, y'all. God would never ask us to do something that didn't give us the power to do. I didn't have the kind of mentors that I needed when I read that passage in a, in a life crisis 20 years ago, almost 21. January, 20, uh, January 7th of 2000, I know exactly when it was. And here's the thing about joy. It means to be filled. It means to be overjoyed. It means to be pleasant. It means to be full of joy. See the full part? But I don't know about you, but when I encounter various trials, situations, things, well, what kind of trials? Well, let's just stop. It's any time I'm tested, tried, tempted, anything that, it, that basically, and this is my paraphrase, anything that stresses me out, what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to be governor over that emotion is what the word consider means. I'm to govern it. When I was a kid, we used to have these go-karts and you know, the parents would all put these governors on them to make them not go quite as fast. And that sucked. We figured out real quick that you could adjust those little suckers, fly like the wind. And then of course, put them back on when you came back home and tell your parents everything was okay. I don't advocate that message if you're a kid you should try it's really cool anyway we are allowed to govern our emotions do you know how many people do not know that we have the power we have dominion over our emotions consider it all joy govern it govern i want you to govern over what you're feeling and switch it to joy now those of you that came out of the new age movement i got news for you a lot of the stuff you stumbled upon was universal laws, not by the universe, created by the universe, but by created by the one that made the universe. The universal law is when you consider it all joy, that is the frequency of God. The joy of the Lord is our strength. That is what the word of God tells us. And so I wanna tell you right now, and I am so excited, and I just wanna make absolute sure that I am, in fact, <laughs> recording this because it does not say anywhere whether I am or not. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna trust God with all my heart. So here's the thing: perseverance. I don't like it. I don't want it. I'm gonna move my little camera around here because knowing that the testing of your face, faith produces perseverance. I don't like that word. I'm still not crazy about it. But let perseverance, oh, it's repeated, must be important, finish its work so that you may know, you may be mature, complete, and lack, lacking in nothing. I want to paraphrase this for you. Can you be patient while you're waiting for your miracle, while you're waiting for your outcome? You see, perseverance actually means to just wait patiently for God to do in the frequency of joy wait patiently. Hey, Michael, what do you think is going to happen in the new world order? I don't know, but I know God's going to deliver us. I don't know, but where are you going to live, Michael? What are you going to do? I don't know, but I know that the wisdom of God is going to speak to me. How are you going to buy, sell, or trade? You're not going to take the mark. I don't know, but I know God's got this. You see, until my heart is fully persuaded at that level of wisdom, everything I'm doing, Everything I'm thinking is a waste of my time. Reading the Bible is a waste until it comes in to your heart and transforms the way you feel about your relationship with God. You see, we 
God, we were created in God's own image, and God has feelings. If you don't think so, go look at the Bible throughout the Old Testament. You'll see a whole bunch of those. And then this thing goes on. What do I do when I don't know what to do? That's a, that's a whole sermon in and of itself. What to do when I don't know what to do? I can tell you what it is. You lean into God. James 1, you lean into God for wisdom. You see, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives it generously. That's just like, hey, you ever meet somebody that's really generous? If you ever meet somebody that's really, they're nice people to be around, aren't they? I hope that you see me as generous. I try to give my time. I try to give my, my heart, my soul, my passion, everything I'm doing here at Life Wrap. That's it's me being generous. Are you being generous with people? To generously give without finding fault. Like, oh, you know what, Michael, I'd like to give to you some wisdom, but you know, you did this on Tuesday, you did that on Wednesday, you did God doesn't do that because he says he gives the Bible says he gives generously without fault. And it will be given to you. But uh-oh, when you uh, are in a law, lawyer's office and a good Jewish attorney, right? You need to recognize the buts. And I'm talking about <clears throat> the contingencies because we serve a Jewish lawyer. That's what, that's what God is. And he says, but when you ask, believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. I used to live in uh, Hawaii. I lived in several islands there, two, two in particular, but I uh, had the, I managed retail stores and uh, art galleries and I was on every island. And, and a couple of those islands have what's called the windward side. Oh my goodness, is it windy. You know, one of them is the um, surf sailing capital of the world. I'm sure there's a cooler name for that, but it wasn't my thing, so I didn't learn it. But I was with buddies that were world-class and I would watch them do it. And I'm telling you, the sea blown around by the wind is fierce. Do you want that kind of life? You see, but there's a plan here. God says wisdom. What is wisdom? Christ is called the wisdom of God. Do you know that when you're asking for God to fill your heart to the overflow, the power of the living God via the Holy Spirit, the Holy One of Israel is now alive inside of us speaking to us, giving us application of the right things to do. I'm telling you guys, the more that you surrender your hearts to God, the less distortion you're going to have in your hearts, and the more frequently and more accessible you're going to hear the voice of God. The word doubt, can I just cut to the chase? It means fixed heart. Now, it means to not have hesitation. Oh, don't overweigh things. Don't judge between one and the other. Just go, you know what, God? I just don't know what to do right now, but I'm just not going to doubt, waver, judge. I'm going to sit here with a totally fixed heart. Where am I going to live? What am I going to do? Where am I going to go? What is the end times going to be? What's my role? What's my lane? Where do I work? What do I do for my family that's not safe? Somebody asked me that question. You know what you do? You trust the Lord with your whole heart. You lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, you acknowledge him, and he will set your paths straight. That is a covenant promise to his kid. You know what another one is? That you and your entire family will be saved. I got news for you all. Some of our kids, some of our family, some of our brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers are not going to make the E train out in rapture. They're going to come to Christ because of all the seeds people planted along the way. It's going to be pe preachers left behind that only had the, the Lord experience, the God experience in their heads and not their hearts. We, Our job is to love people unconditionally. Our job is to walk in a way that's consistently growing in our journey. Our job is to preach the gospel to others with never uttering a word. Because our life must be a lot of reflection of the Christ we claim to follow than the words we speak. So listen to me, man. There's hope above hope. There's hope beyond measure. There is such beautiful things available in God. And I just want you to know how, how happy I am that that thing says recording. No, I'm serious here. We're entering a time and we need to know that we can change the way we feel. We can change our emotional state. I can tell you the biology of belief supports this. 
Um, the work that I've seen for 30 years supports this in three days of accessing the spirit of joy. I don't care what the circumstances are. I don't care how you feel. And I have my litany of health stuff just like y'all do. If you will access joy unspeakable for 72 hours, three days, day and night, it changes your very brain chemistry and it puts you on a trajectory to be able to access it a lot easier. You know, not only is the joy of the Lord our strength, but the wisdom of God is what's going to give us the keys to the kingdom about what, what to do, where to go, when to go. As I record this, uh, it's like a week before, I think it's a week and a day before Thanksgiving in 2020. We are entering such a strange season of uh, tyrannical um, overlords, um, wicked, evil leaders. Um, on a global level, pulling levers, we have an election that's been overfraught with fraud. We have uh, people who are spiritually blind. We are being programmed like little sheep to be living in fear, living in fear, living in fear. And if you're not careful, the Bible says that above all else, guard your heart, for out of it is the wellspring of life. Every time we're bombarded with fear, they are trying to collapse our hope. They are trying to wear us down. They are trying to create the one world government that the Bible warned us about but also gave us great hope in. What do you mean? There's always a paradox. Satan is the Xerox copy maker of life, guys. This one world government, it lasts for seven years and then Jesus comes back. Whew. I mean, did you really, when I said that, did you really believe it? He's coming back on earth to reign the real government for 1,000 years and then he finally defeats the destroys Satan and all his little counterparts forever at the end of that. What side do you want to be on? I can't speak for everybody, but I'm going to choose joy. You know, if I can help you um, in any way, organize your Wednesdays, I think what we're going to do is start to develop leaders. Um, it doesn't have to be on Wednesdays. I'm going to do this live at noon on Wednesdays uh, via an embedded Zoom in the live Facebook, as long as we can still use Facebook, which I think it stays in number. And what we wanna do is you need to seek God. Am I supposed to pray? Am I supposed to give? Am I supposed to go? Or am I supposed to share? Those are the three uh, mantles that we are required biblically to figure out. Pray, give, go, or share. The call on our lives is as real as real can be we get to choose the path and i would encourage you to seek god on the lane you're supposed to be in right now and then go all in with a spirit of excellence to reach as many people as possible between here and the rapture of the church god bless you from life craft ministries if i can help you in any way you know where to reach us god bless